Hey guys, it's Lauren here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, so this is honestly like a pretty spontaneous uh, review of the movie Bubble by Netflix. It just came out like a couple of days ago and I just really enjoyed watching it last night. Look, I'm in the midst of finals. It's been a lot. I've been in the midst of chaos for like at least a week now. We still got a couple more weeks to go, but I found a bit of solace in the movie Bubble. So I figured I'd give a review and let you guys know my thoughts, let you guys know whether or not you should watch it. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. So to start off, Bubble is obviously like an anime movie I honestly would consider it the anime movie of the summer. Let's talk about the people involved. So the movie is directed by Tetsuro Araki, who is also an animator, and he's worked on projects like Attack on Titan and Death Note. And honestly, like, the Attack on Titan bit shows. It shows. We'll get into that, though. Also, it has a soundtrack that is included by Hiroyuki Sano, and bro, the soundtrack is goaded. It's so good. Look, after I watched the movie, even before I finished the movie, I paused the movie to listen to the soundtrack in the bathroom and pretend like I was in the movie, bro. That's how good the soundtrack is, but no one's surprised because it's Hiroyuki Sano. So that was fire. Um, it also has a pretty stellar cast from a lot of different projects that I will not be naming, but I'll list them all right here. And yeah, the voice acting was amazing. The animation was beautiful. The soundtrack was amazing. And so was the plot and the characters. So it all just had like a good mix of, first of all, like a good team working on the movie, but also just like a lot of good storytelling elements that made it into a fantastic, yeah, at least a good four out of five star watch. The synopsis. So this movie basically follows the story of Tokyo being in this weird like climate phenomenon going on where bubbles are falling from the sky. One day they just like fall. They're beautiful. No one really knows where they came from. No one really knows what's going on with them. And then all of a sudden something in Tokyo Tower explodes, which leads to uh, the decimation of Tokyo as a city. All of a sudden the bubbles drop and it leads to like the flooding of like the city itself and the deconstruction of the buildings. And so all that's left is like a few refugee, I guess you could call them, survivors that are lingering within the city because they just don't really want to leave. They have nowhere else they really want to go. And they decide to stay there. Along with that group, there's a group of teenagers who are excited by the notion of staying there. And in order to like, kind of like take their minds off their own like climate situation, they form this uh, parkour park place in which they like compete in team battles and just like do their best with their athletic abilities. Playing around with the city rebel and the bubbles themselves. One day, um, the protagonist of the movie Hibiki, he ends up following like this song he's been hearing since the explosion at Tokyo that led to um, the decimation of the city. He ends up following the song to Tokyo Tower and there he falls into the ocean and right at the moment of death he ends up meeting this girl who gives him the kiss of life. And from there on they kind of just end up discovering each other's dynamics, doing the parkour thing, and of course a big unexpected twist happens at the end of the movie. So that's basically what the movie's about. I will be going into spoiler detail so if you have not watched the movie yet, this might not be the video for you, <laughs> but it's okay. That's just a heads up. That is the synopsis of the movie. There's a lot of things that the movie does well. For one, like again, it tackles the issues of climate change. It's kind of similar to Weathering with You by chance because, well, for one, it's like it has to do with water, but instead of it being constant rain, it's just a mysterious appearance of bubbles that just cause like a flooding to occur within Tokyo. Also, the main character looks like the guy from Free. You know what I'm talking about? Like, is he even obsessed with like the water and like the bubbles and everything like that? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know what? We'll stop it there. I'll stop there with that. But the movie does handle the topic of climate change and kind of just like the changing world in general. I really enjoyed the idea of like the abandonment issue because I feel like for a lot of like situations and customs, people are like, okay, like there's hurricanes going on there, earthquakes, forest fires. Why do you still live in this area? It kind of tackles the question of like, yeah, like why don't you just leave? Why don't you just migrate somewhere else? This is their home that's all like people have known so they don't necessarily want to leave it no matter how dire the situation is. What should really be done is kind of like an investigation from everyone else outside the world in order to figure out like how to fix the problem, how to save the people that live there and allow them to live there as long as possible as opposed to just migrating and abandoning like these places in the world that are succumbing more quickly to climate change. And I like the idea of that kind of being displayed by the bubble too because the bubble is there clearly and it's covering over the entire city but instead it's being abandoned by some of the Japanese people for one. For another like you don't really see any interference the outside world, which is interesting because I feel like in a lot of these supernatural movies, when something strange happens with the climate or like when there's like this weird phenomena, a lot of the world like intercedes, but it kind of does actually display like a real life thing where it's like the world will witness like a climate change problem happening within a certain part of the world. Maybe typically in like the global south that has to do with like drought or like incredible like hurricane problems, things like that. And then they're basically abandoned by like the government, by other countries. Um, the problem with like climate is essentially ignored and it's being continuously pushed off for the sake of economic growth and stuff like that, which is like, should we care about the economy as much if we're gonna be dead in 50 
50 years. Who knows? Who knows? If, if we are not even going to see the sun the next century, you know, like we, we need to understand our priorities. So I think like it was honestly like, a good point to like not include the rest of the world in this movie. And though it's like one of the minor details, because obviously like the rest of the world isn't really talked about, I think it's interesting how they just don't include the rest of the world in this movie. I think it's a depth when one part of the world succumbs to the ramifications of climate change, everything terrible that happens because of it, they're abandoned. So anyways, I like that part. The other thing I wanted to talk about in this review is the concept of bubble, which I think resonates a lot <laughs> in this movie, obviously because it's called Bubble. For one, it doesn't only have to do with the uh, love interest and secondary protagonist of the movie, Uta. First of all, Uta herself is a bubble. Spoiler, again, I, I said I'd get into this, but she's a bubble. That's like the one on the nose thing. But the other concept of the bubble is if you are going through a climate crisis, like you are in this bubble of you're dealing with that problem in an isolated sort of manner and governments abandon you, like the rest of the world's countries abandon you. Basically, you have no allies except for yourself and your community. And that would be the other bubble to mention. So I feel like in this movie a lot, I think there's some certain scenes that just like really accentuate this fact that I will get into. We see Hibiki, the protagonist, he always has his ears covered. Hibiki says in one scene that when he was a kid and he first came to Tokyo with his mom, all of the sounds of like the world and the city, just like the cars and the buildings and the noises, like the yelling, all of that was too much for him. He always felt like he had to cover his ears. He just felt like he had to block out the world's problems. He created a bubble around himself. So that way like he was able to stay sane in some way. And that was by keeping like his earphones on, which I think was like an awesome character design choice because that wasn't only for like the sake of looking cool, it was for the sake of functionality. Awesome. Anyways, he has his earphones on his head and that was essentially like his way of like creating a bubble around himself. There is a barrier between himself and the world and that is how he keeps his sanity because like the world and its noisiness and all of its problems, it was too much for him. It was too much for him as a young kid. But his bubble begins to gradually expand throughout the rest of the movie. From one when Uta first comes, she kind of um burst his bubble a little bit by like just constantly intruding in his space after he like finds her and brings her back to the little place that he was living with his team. She just is very aw. She doesn't like fit into the standards of even like city living life. Like she doesn't understand human customs or anything like that because she's a bubble. And um, I don't know, just her bizarreness helps break down um, Hibiki a little bit. Also just like her willingness to be around him despite the fact that he's very aloof and doesn't even like really want to talk to um, the other members of his team in the beginning of the movie. She slowly breaks down his barriers by like not being daunted by his aloofness or his ability and just like constantly staying by his side and being open to learning from him and hearing about his story. So I don't know, she slowly breaks down his bubble in that way and becomes like the first like really official and concrete member of his own community. And it's the community where he starts to begin to become like really sane. Her being infiltrated into the community allows everyone else to steadily become infiltrated. You see in the beginning of the movie, he's very aloof towards um, all the members of his team. He basically really shuts down like a younger member of the team that was trying to impress him with like his ability to jump on bubbles. He ignores the leader and everything the leader has to say about teamwork. But the, by the end of the movie, he willingly like participates in things like a group breakfast and group exercising and practicing. And he even acts for help by the end of the movie. So that's like incredible character development for Hibiki. It was just nice to see that community expansion because I feel like a lot of times in moments of crisis, people always say you really need that close circle. Circles and bubbles obviously like a big thing in the movie. Um, but you really need your close circle in order to stay sane, be able to like do anything to function. In a moment of crisis when it's like you're going through climate change, the rest of the world abandons you, lets that part of the world fall apart. Having that community is really important. The whole movie kind of like encapsulates what it means to like create a community. That was a really beautiful part of the movie and I enjoyed seeing that not only as like Hibiki's character arc, but as like an important theme for like not just the movie, but for life. That was fantastic. You just see like that theme of the bubble of happiness be it, like a thing a lot. At the end of the race between like them and like the tech YouTuber, <laughs> the YouTuber parkour evil guys, there is that scene where like there's just like a shining of sunlight like around Hibiki and like the rest of the team and Uta who is trying to hide her arm that devolved into bubbles. Um, There's just this like sheen and ball of sunlight and I'll see if I can get a screenshot and insert here but like you know how Netflix can be like um, but there's just this bubble of sunlight around them and like the rest of the world is dark and kind of like you can see like the debris and everything that's like happened with two Tokyo that's almost like glossed over by like the sense of parkour. Them and their little moment of happiness and their victory of getting their pseudo mom slash like the researcher back in their midst. That was just a really beautiful scene that accentuated how important community can be and ignoring like all the things that are happening. It's like the same thing with even like the parkour events, like the parkour park and the team battles happening within Tokyo. That's also a community of bubble is helping like keep a barrier against like all of the bad things that's happening around them and the fact that they can't control what's happening to the city that they all lived in, what's happening to their 
relatives who like a lot of them have lost their families, like a lot of the people of orphans. Um, they created a pseudo community through like this parkour battle experience. That's also just like a small bubble in which we get to see like a beautiful part to like the terribleness that happened to like Tokyo in their home. All of the scenes are breathtaking. They fly through the air like Attack on Titan characters. <laughs> it makes you feel very exhilarated and I don't know it just has like that ideal childhood fantasy thing. But when you step back and actually look at it like all of the buildings are falling over. They don't have proper shelters like homes away from all of the madness going on but they somehow form these communities and those like communities the circle um it helps keep out all the madness. So yeah the idea of community in this movie well I'm not sure if I call it subtle it's like almost like a background thing it's very very important I think for like the idea of the movie. So I think the movie executed that like really really well. But another thing that the movie does really well is just like show exhilarating moments. The parkour scenes were insane. Look, if you don't even want to watch the movie for like the romance that's going on between Uta and Hibiki, bro, the parkour scenes, the action scenes are fire. My favorite parkour battle scene is the one against like the evil YouTuber guys <laughs> that are just trying to make a profit. Them battling between those two and like Uta and Hibiki just like fighting together and like flipping around through the air and defying gravity. Bro, that shit was fantastic. There's this YouTube comment, which I'll like insert a screenshot here, where the movie kind of just shows like childhood like desire to like constantly jump around like when we were kids we jump around on our couches and pretend like we we're like the protagonist of our own world and we basically like walk around daydreaming. This movie almost feels like a daydream where you're like walking around and you feel like you could do flips off buildings and all that other stuff. It just has that exhilarating appeal that like you also see in Attack on Titan and other anime. Another scene that I really went out highlight that was really good with the parkour was like there's like a character with a disability in the movie and like basically um he's the leader of the group the blue group that Hibiki is also part of and he lost his leg. In the last scene he helps like save Uta essentially and he just like does this really insane trick. He has to run in a certain way because of his like missing leg and it was fantastic. You can tell how much love the animators and just like the director in general put into that scene to like show a disabled character like running around and like doing something athletic and showing that they still have a life. That was amazing. Like I got chills watching that scene. Actual chills. It was amazing. So good. The parkour scenes were just a really big highlight of this movie. Another thing that was really good was the well-written characters. First of all, we already talked about Hibiki's arc. Uta's arc was also fantastic because like we didn't really understand her. First of all, it's like, oh, it's gonna be another one of those like, magical animal like girl comes in and she's just like really quirky and everything like that and that's why like she's cool. But like we actually see real depth to her character. Like it shows in her care of Hibiki. She met him when she was a kid and then like she also just continues to like look out for him in her own way. So it's like not like she's just like this child that Hibiki's taking care of and like she's completely ignorant to the ways of the world, but she's like really trying her best to like live in her own way and almost and trying to actually like exit like a part of the world that she just wasn't feeling as happy in. Her arc is also pretty fantastic. And then another thing that was really good was um the leader. I love his character development, okay? Like this guy, the, the leader was like a government certified hater, bro, against Hibiki. Like everywhere Hibiki went, he'd be scowling, bro. Like he was so not with it. However, like by the end of the movie, like we discovered it wasn't just he hated Hibiki because of his abilities. It was because at the end of the day, what the leader wanted from Hibiki was like a willingness to like be part of their community and a willingness to like work with them and to treat them as a team as opposed to just like side characters to Hibiki. And in the end of the movie, when like Hibiki finally asked them for help, like the leader, like despite like not really having like the best attitude towards Hibiki, but then he's like, nah, we're, we're gonna help this man. We're going to help him because that was what all he wanted at the end of the day. Like what he really wanted was a moment where like Hibiki really appreciated them as a group. And that was all he wanted at the end. And that's so fucking wholesome because other times the leader or whoever it is that feels like a top dog, like they all, they hate the main character just because they feel like they're undermining them with their ability, et cetera, et cetera. But like what this leader wanted in this movie just was, he wanted like Hibiki to rely on him. And that's just so freaking wholesome. Wholesome. Another arc I enjoyed was like the one of like the little boy who again I mentioned before like in the beginning of the movie he tried to jump on a bubble like Hibuki but he failed because he just did not he couldn't listen to like the song of the bubbles I guess and he wasn't as aware of them as Hibiki was so it was just impossible for him to do. Hibiki tells him in the beginning of the movie to fear more and we actually see like despite the fact that the character maintains his child like um, continence um, he actually does manage to like fear more and in the, in the movie he you see him be more cautious and just like mature more in that sense he's more aware of the stakes of what he's doing like yes there are playing around but it's also like they're possibly gonna die from what they're doing. So it was interesting seeing the, the maturity um, develop in that character and it was just overall like a fantastic, the characters were so good. All of them didn't feel as 2D as they could have which like 
I feel like that happens in a lot of other movies, like the best friends, like the side characters, they feel very 2D and they're basically just there to be like plot devices. In this movie, I feel like all of them actually did have their own personal motivations and they were just wholesome to watch. It appealed to like just the wanting to be in that world. Like this whole movie made you feel like you wanted to be in that world, partly because it was like a bubble world, but also because like the cast was actually fantastic. So also hats off to the creators for that. Oh yes, in this movie, it's one last thing. Bro, the queer agenda, look, we love a boy in a crop top. Can we mention that? We love a boy in a crop top and I love that. And then at the end, we had all the homies in like heeled shoes. Yeah, we brought the Healy sneakers back. That was fantastic. Look, I feel like this movie was also like subtly asserting the bi, like queer agenda, and they did a good job with that. Look, look, I was here for it. That was fantastic. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you guys so, so much for watching for my spontaneous review video. Uh, if you like this video, of course, like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on all my medias. They're always linked down below. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.